It was hot as Hades, and the ground was dusty. Puffs of dirt were getting kicked up with each step. The desert sun was beating down on us, and the small, scraggly trees mocked us as we tried to find reprieve in their non-existent shade coverage. We slowly trudged back up that five mile hill to our campsite on top of the mountain. Now the trip down had come with a bounce in our step. We were following rough directions based on experiential landmarkers. You, you know the type. When you see the fence, turn right and follow it about 500 feet until you reach the big rock. You'll know it when you see it. Then follow the trail eastward, keeping an eye on the left until you see little piles of rocks marking the way north. You'll then ford a stream and then look for the stone that looks like a nose. We were trying to find our way based on these rough directions. The sense of adventure motivated us. We took a step by excited step forward seeking out our destination. Now we were, we were trying to find the ancient ruins of the Lewis Lodge defensive stronghold, an ancient Anasazi encampment built into the edge of a massive cliff. And friends, we found it. It was one of the most incredible adventures that I have been on. And I felt strangely emotional experiencing history that relatively few had found before us. And I was thirsty. It's hot. It was dusty. We had walked a long way. Incredibly thirsty. Now, to be clear, we seriously underestimated the amount of water that we would need. And part of me thinks that we were overly uh, cautious about carrying the amount of weight of water that we should have had. After spending time thoroughly soaking in the experience, we turned to make our way back to our campsite. And at this point, we uh, did a water check and realized that we were almost out. And we had the most grueling part of the trip ahead of us. With the excitement of the discovery behind us, we began the trek. As I said, it was hot as Hades out on the trail. And as we walked, I had a film form in my mouth. You may know the kind. I wasn't sure if it was because of the dust that was being kicked up, being caught. And the, uh, my mouth was so dry, I couldn't clear it. I was thirsty, so, so thirsty with nothing else but to keep going we continued putting one tired foot in front of the other making our way up we we knew there was water at the campsite we just had to get there after a long hot grueling hike back up we crested the hill on which our campsite was staked the longing for water reached a fever pitch and it was there we were stopped in our tracks. You see, we had left a friend at our campsite. He didn't feel like coming along on the adventure, but in the hours we were gone, he got bored and decided to leave, taking our sole vehicle with him. The water? Yeah, it was in the vehicle. You better believe we weren't happy with him. The joy and excitement of our discovery was long forgotten at this point, and we were a little bit annoyed at our friend. We sat down and we waited. Now eventually he came back and we were able to rehydrate. And boy, did we give him the gears. But in that moment, in that moment, I feel like I understood what it was like to be thirsty. 
I was so thirsty. Now, can you remember a time when you were extremely hungry or extremely thirsty? Now, what got you to that place? What brought you to the place of longing for food or drink? This summer, you may remember that we're taking a stroll through the Beatitudes, that portion of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount at the very beginning. If you've missed the talk so far, I encourage you to check them out on our website, and then you can catch up and continue following along as we move our way through. Now this week, Jesus says in Matthew 5, verse 6, he says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. As we've noted each week, the Greek word translated blessed is the word makarios. And on top of meaning blessed, it carries those connotations. Like we understand the word lucky, and it also means happy. So happy, lucky, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Again, can you remember a time where you were dying of thirst? Or can you remember a time where you were just so starving? Our bodies require food and water to be sustained. To be hungry or thirsty is a reminder from our bodies that it is looking for some refueling to face the day ahead. To speak of hunger and thirst is to speak of some of the deepest, most foundational needs that we have as human beings. If you think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it articulates the primacy with which we seek the fulfillment of our needs. And the most foundational need are those physiological needs, air, food, water, shelter, sleep. We seek the satisfaction of these first before we move on to any of the higher order needs in the hierarchy. Now, well, if you think about it, it kind of does make sense. If you were being suffocated, your lungs aching for another breath, your entire being would be focused on the need for air, you'd be struggling for a breath. And I think in that moment, you simply wouldn't care about the fight you had with your sibling. You'd be longing for air, that physiological need, bottom rung of the hierarchy. Now in Jesus' kingdom, a passionate pursuit of righteousness is compared to humanity's most basic needs, hunger for food, thirst for water. By extension, we could say that when righteousness is absent, nothing else matters but the pursuit of and restoration of righteousness. Now you may be asking, John, what precisely does Jesus mean by this word righteousness? It sounds awfully churchy. I don't really understand it. Well, the Greek word, dikaiosune, uh, carries a sense of ethical right, rightness, ethical rightness. So we're talking about people who have a drive deep down inside them to do what is right. And it bubbles up from the core of their being. Now, with everything swirling in our present moment, it's important to clarify that the word dikaiosune, righteousness, is less about legal right and wrong and all about ethical right and wrong. Friends, we're talking here about justice, about justice. So blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be filled. In some respects, we seem to be living at a time where our society is facing the hunger pangs of justice. We long for the world's brokenness to be put back together. And instead of joining hands and firmly standing in place of an ethical rightness of justice, all too often we find ourselves bickering about, well, what is legally possible? What's legal? Friends, we may live in Canada, but we're invited to place our allegiance in King Jesus. There are times when the laws of our land allow for things that simply aren't 
just. The action or behavior falls out of the bounds of righteousness, and yet it's still legal. When we have or been orienting ourselves to a Jesus way of life, then oftentimes these unjust actions create a resounding dissonance in us. We become uncomfortable. We become uh, upset with the injustice before us. Even again, it may even be legal. When that dissonance emerges, may we turn to creatively pursuing what is right. Back in 2008, the late John Lewis, a longtime pillar in the civil rights movement, tweeted, he said, do not get lost in a sea of despair. Be hopeful, be optimistic. Our struggle is not the struggle of a day, a week, a month, or a year. It is the struggle of a lifetime. Never, ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. In these words, he's getting at hungering and thirsting for righteousness. He's describing life in the now but not yet kingdom of God. You see, God's kingdom even now is breaking into this world, yet we wait for the final completion of that. One day it will be complete reality. And so when injustice creates dissonance in us, we do not despair. Friends, no, we remain hopeful, optimistic, longing for that day when Christ's work will be finalized. But in the meantime, we stand against the brokenness and injustice. In our hunger and thirst for righteousness, we never fear to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. Maybe you're hungry today for a little bit more justice. Maybe you're thirsty today for a little bit of righteousness. I want to encourage you, friends, to speak up when necessary. When you see something that's not right, this dissonance that's created in you, lean in. Stand in the gap. Try to bring a sense of Christ's kingdom even in that space. In speaking about the work of Christ, the Apostle Paul paints a compelling vision of where our hope actually rests. That vision we keep in mind as we hunger and thirst for justice. He says in Colossians 1 verses 18 to 20, and I'm reading from the message, he said, He, Christ, was supreme in the beginning, and leading the resurrection parade, he is supreme in the end. From beginning to end, he's there, towering far above everything, everyone. So spacious is he, so roomy, that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, animals and atoms, get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies. All because of his death, his blood that poured down from the cross. I thank God sometimes for Eugene Peterson and the language with which he allows the biblical text to pop. Now, on that dusty road, I couldn't wait for a little bit of water. I couldn't wait for a little bit of water. I thirsted for it, for nourishment. Friends, my prayer is that we would be uncomfortable with injustice, that we would lean into that dissonance, that we wouldn't just simply ignore it. May it ring in our ears to a fever pitch until we do something about it. When I think of Eugene Peterson's description when he says, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, animals and atoms, get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies. Friends, now that's food and drink for the soul. And Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled.